What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Every Flavor of Robot. It is Rover time. So here we are in Swabnel's room. Uh, looks like he got us a little cute Rover guy while I wasn't looking. Looks pretty good. Honestly, that kind of rolls very satisfyingly. Gimbal motors on board. Let me change this camera around. And go. Oh, snap. So we're just testing to see if, you know, this platform can move across the floor before we start making any adjustments. Okay, why is only one motor going? Okay, so just one wheel is enough to drive it though. That's interesting. All right, bye. <laughs> so, you know, a bit of a problem. Rover doesn't quite go over. It's gonna take a lot more than that to get around in this household. So one option is gonna be to add a gear reduction. So I made a little planetary gearbox right here. The only problem is you can hear it. You hear, you hear that noise? You know how you like potato chips that are like crunchy and really hard to turn with your hand? You don't actually like those things in gearboxes, so I'm gonna fix that. Mainly by adjusting these clearances, I think I can make it run smoother. And if this test print works well, then we'll toss it on the rover. This is called a planetary gearbox because it has these planet gears that revolve around the center, which is the sun gear, and then that's all inside of a ring gear. And that's pretty smooth. I think that worked well. So the funny thing about these gearboxes is you can either you can decide which you output you want it to be because if I hold the outside it'll spin the middle one but if I hold the outside one it'll spin the housing so we could just put the wheel on the housing there and just spin it like this honestly maybe not the worst idea in an effort to print more gearboxes I broke my 3d printer now this was some serious emotional pain let me tell you I could not, for the life of me, get any 3D prints to work. At first it was because it was too cold, and so I tried to heat it up, and that uh, backfired on me. And then I brought it inside, and it just constant data transmission errors, whatever that means. I hate you. I hate you so much. I was getting pretty demoralized, honestly. And I realized that just in the nick of time, DHL had delivered the boards we had ordered from this video sponsor. PCBWay. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You need to know about PCBWay if you're looking for PCB prototyping or assemblies or they even do 3D printing, CNCing, and a bunch of other stuff. Go check out their website and see what they can help you with. I really do think they do a good job. This is the board that they sent us. It looks pretty clean and more importantly here is the one that they sent us fully assembled. Very nice. And thank you again to PCB Way for sponsoring Every Flavor Robot. So yeah, just to keep everything like organized here, we got the new board in, which means that we can get bigger motors, which means that we don't need the gearbox to add extra torque. But I chose the wrong chip here and that's keeping us from programming it. So we gotta take that off. And then we need to add very little tiny wires between those pads. Uh, but I can't do that while I'm holding my phone. But uh, this is what it looks like after it's done. And here's the little chip beside it. And that actually worked. That's all that we needed to do. But I decided to go ahead and add this inductor while I was there because I asked PCBWay to leave it off of the board. But after that was done, we got the blinky sketch up and running on the board. That's great. Then I just had to go through and make sure all of the GPIO pins matched the schematic with the code. So now we're back. To this very professional stand where I taped an encoder on the back of this motor. And if we can get this motor spinning with a lot of torque, that means that we can have bigger wheels on our rover. So I'm running the calibration script, and wow, just like that we have a closed loop velocity control going right there. So let's get some bigger wheels on this rover.
Oh man, I just realized I don't have a way to put board on the rover. All right, we're running out of time for this video, so we really gotta wrap this up. We're gonna CAD, we're gonna print, we're gonna assemble the boards, we're gonna solder the motors to the boards, and then we're gonna test it. Let's go. All right, the 3D printer says we have 35 minutes. All right, first we have to steal another inductor. Thank you. And a couple of these connectors. The tricky part is that you can't really put them on very well with the hot air gun because they they like to melt. So I like to do it with the soldering iron. Um, I was too lazy to take off the chisel tip, so we just uh, went for it. But honestly, not so bad. It's not so bad. Nothing more calming than a little bit of soldering. Rinse and repeat for board number two. And then the real tedious task here is that the motors don't have long enough wires, or at least two of them don't. So I have to add on some length, that way the motors can reach the motor controllers. I am speed, 35 minutes. Everything was going really well up until this point, and then two really annoying things happened. One, well, surprise, surprise, the 3D printer just stopped working yet again. Do something. And then two, when Swapnel and I were testing the uh, the rover, we found a bug with the encoder. Oh man, I really wanted to uh, solve that mystery and then tell you all that it was, you know, this niche error. Uh, but it just disappeared. Uh, they're the worst ones, because I'm sure that's going to come back and bite us when we least expect it. Moving on. So the next bug that we found, some combination of the tick library and the Wi-Fi and the motor controls that we're running uh, just don't work well together. It's confusing because it works well on this one. Since we need the bigger motors uh, for this project, we gotta debug that eventually. We'll figure it out. But we did get the rover driving, which was exciting. <laughs> Whenever I'm not in the room, this thing works amazingly. None of those bugs are gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> the real test of wonder. Oh, is it gonna drive? It will. Hey! Some of you might be asking, Alex, what's that big lump of stuff on top of the rover? That's a Raspberry Pi 4 and a 2D LiDAR system that Swapnil has been working with. We want to be able to have it go around the house by itself, like fully autonomously. Um, so if I want it in the, in the living room, we should be able to press a button and say, hey, come to the living room and it'll, from wherever it is, drive around the obstacles and everything and get to the living room. It's pretty hard stuff to do. We need to spin up a simple simulator and we'll test all of our autonomy code in that. And once it's working there, we'll push it over to the real rover. People have done this before, and there's a software that we use called ROS, uh, which has the full autonomy stack, plug it into your robot and go. Um, for some context, in the past, getting something set up like this has taken us months. And Swapnil's being coy there because he got this working in like two and a half minutes. So it turns out that if you just follow what Ross tells you, in their simple example, you can get localization up. So you can say, hey, we want you to go over here in the room. And the robot, using all that data, will navigate over. So I'm going to show it to you once here. You can see it's kind of like based on the data, based on its position, it updates its trajectory and heads over there. Good progress so far. Now, I'm switching away from this. Um, and we'll see, maybe something else. If you rang this video, follow our bell and thumbs up our comment section. We're going to get back to building robots. Take it to some place with like dirt and make it look like it's a floor of Mars. <laughs> <laughs>